Well, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Renew Life Church. I'm Keith. I'm one of the associate pastors here. Whether you're joining us online or at the Cole Theater, really excited just to be with you whenever you are listening. Today is going to be a it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun little talk here. Uh, it seems like that's what what me and Braden have <laughs> have got to to do over the last month is is to give more of more talks and actually messages. But it's just kind of the the season that we're in right now. And kind of what's going on in our country. It's just kind of what we what we feel we need to do in the church. And and so today I want to jump into our subject and I want to talk to you uh, about how to function as the body of Christ. How are we to function as the body of Christ? In fact, as I as I talk today, I'm talking in w- within the restraints of our relationship with one another as believers. How should the body of Christ be treating? one another. What does that actually look like? What does it sound like? How are, what are we supposed to do? Um, how are we supposed to treat the body of Christ? What are we not supposed to do? What are some things we should be saying? What are some things we probably shouldn't say? You know, we, we've all heard the scripture in 1 Corinthians 12 that talks about us being the body of Christ and how we've been created differently. And I'm going to talk about that, that today. But I want you to realize the important, the importance of functioning in the body of Christ the way God has called us to function. There's nothing more attractive to the world than, the, than, than those who follow Jesus who love one another. In fact, isn't that what Jesus said? He said, how, how will they know you're my disciples? He said, it'll be because of your love for one another. If we're wanting things to change, if we're wanting things to look different in our world, can I just say, I, I hope that the world can take a look at the church and say, that's what it should look like. That's a good example. That's how we should treat one another. That's how we should talk to one another. That's how we should listen to one another. And so today I, I want to talk around that subject of how to function as the body of Christ. Hey, if there's one thing that we can all agree on even today and at this moment is that there's actually a lot to disagree about. If there's one thing we can agree about is that there's a lot to disagree about. As, as we go through the climate in our country right now, Golly, there are so many things that we can disagree about. Here we are in an election year, a lot to disagree about. Um, we, we have the conversation around racism in our country. There's a lot to disagree about. Uh, there, there's conspiracy theory, theories out there of 5G and the coronavirus. Um, and there, there, there's a conspiracy, and, and, and you may not even consider it a conspiracy, but that the media is purposely, um, you know, upping and, and uh, just making racism a big deal in our country because it's all about politics. It's an election year. There's all kinds of things that are, that are coming our way about the statues being torn down and how you feel about that and how someone else. I mean, even this week at lunch, we, we as a staff talked about that. The conversations just aren't normal anymore. There's just things that are a little bit more serious. Things are different. And there's just honestly a lot to share our opinion on, and there's a lot to disagree about. We all still wonder, are UFO, UFOs real? We just, we really, we still don't know even about that. There's a lot to have an opinion about. And I just want to ask you this question. Did you know that you can actually still love someone you disagree with? Did you know you can still love someone that you disagree with? Did you know that you can be kind to someone who has a a different political view than you? Did you know that you can be generous to someone who doesn't think like you and who doesn't look like you? Do you know that you can be merciful and graceful to someone who has a completely different perspective on life than you do? Did you actually know you can listen to a preacher who wears skinny jeans and not Wranglers in Midland, Texas? Can you actually do that? Do you know you can love someone who has a different opinion than you? You know, while we might be in this time and think people might be thinking differently, the truth is God has still called us as the body of Christ to live unified and in harmony with one another. Isn't that interesting? We are all so different, yet God said, I want you to be together. Yet God said, I want you to be unified. Yet God said, I want you to love the one sitting next to you, even if they're a Democrat. (laughs) Love the one next to you, even if they're Republican. Love the one next to you, even if they retweet Donald Trump. 
We're called to love even those who disagree and who are different than us. I really want to encourage you this morning that disagreement doesn't have to separate us. Disagreement should not be separating us. And let me just make you aware of what the enemy would love to do. He would love nothing more than to divide the church. He would love nothing more than to divide the body of Christ. Why? Because he knows just as much as we do that there is power in numbers. There is power in agreement. There is power in unity. And there is power in us being in harmony with one another. This is why scripture says we're two or more agree on earth concerning anything. It shall be done. This is why scripture says one can put a thousand of the enemy to flight. Two can put 10,000 to flight. There's a reason why scripture says where two or more are gathered In his name, he is in the midst. That's because there is power in the body. There is power when we come together. Make no mistake right now. We're not in some some physical battle with one another. What is taking place right now is a spiritual battle. And it's the enemy wanting to make his way in and divide the world, divide humanity, and divide the body of Christ. Let's not let him. <laughs> Let's not let him do it. I want to jump into scripture this morning in, um, in Romans chapter 14 because I really want to talk about how are we actually supposed to do this. If we're supposed to stay unified, love those who disagree with us. What does that look like? Romans chapter 14, Paul talking, he says this. He says, accept other believers who are weak in faith and don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. For instance, one person believes it's all right to eat anything, but another believer with a sensitive conscience will eat only vegetables. Now, I, I, know, I know we live in Texas, so, so let me just explain. There's actually people who only eat vegetables. Like they, don't, like they don't eat meat, like steak. Like they don't eat it. And I know, I know that's really hard for you to understand. And so let me, just, let me explain further. They only eat vegetables. So vegetables are they're these little green things that you never eat. Uh, they're actually, so here Paul, he's, he's talking to these people who have these differences of opinion. They're living differently, right? And he goes on to say in verse 3, he says, those who feel free to eat anything must not look down on those who don't. Those who don't eat certain foods must not condemn those who do, for God has accepted them. In the same way, Some think one day is more holy than another day, while others think every day is alike. You should each be fully convinced that whichever day you choose is acceptable. Those who worship the Lord on a special day, they do it to honor him. Those who eat any kind of food do so to honor the Lord, since they give thanks to God before eating. And those who refuse to eat certain foods also want to please the Lord and give thanks to God. For we don't live for ourselves or die for ourselves. If we live, it's to honor the Lord. If we die, it's to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. And then in verse 13, he goes on to say this. So let's stop condemning each other. Decide instead to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to stumble and fail. I love that last part. I'll say this. It says, decide instead. Decide. And I'll just say this. Unity is a decision. Unity is a decision. Would you pray with me? God, we, just, we thank you um, for this moment <clears throat> that we get to share together. I pray even right now, just in the spiritual realm, that there is something changing, there is something shifting. It is a shift out of, out of division and into unity out of divisiveness that the enemy has planned and into harmony that, that God wants. I pray right now, Lord, we, we get in agreement as the body of Christ today, listening from wherever we're listening and watching from. We, we get in agreement. We get behind what you want to do. We get, behind agree, we get behind agreement. We get behind unity. We get behind harmony. We get behind the direction that you are going. And Lord, I just pray if we are walking in any direction, thinking in any direction, feeling in any direction that is opposite of where you're going, we're so thankful we have the Holy Spirit. And we say, Holy Spirit, correct us. Move us onto the path, the pathway that you are going, Lord, because we want to follow you. 
We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's just, let's just talk about people for a minute. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I, I think is so interesting about people is just how different we all are. Um, like, we're all just really, really different. Like, like uh, you know, I've always wondered why, why everyone else is so weird. Like, I, I'm normal, but everyone else, you probably wanted the same thing. Why is everyone so different than me? How do we all think so, so differently? I remember um, when I first got into ministry, I was a, a college pastor in Amarillo. It was kind of my first gig, and I didn't really know much about ministry. And I was doing this college group on Thursday nights, and we had a bunch of people come in. And, and um, there was this couple that came. They were, they were dating in college, and they were completely different than I was. I mean, there, there was not, besides Jesus, there was not one thing that we had in common. They looked different. They talked different. Um, it, it was just, it, we, there was no chemistry between me and these people. And yet they kept coming. They kept coming Thursday after Thursday and showing up. And I just remember um, there was one night everyone had kind of left. And it was just me and, and these two people. And there was nobody else in the room. And we were in that, we, we got in this conversation. And, and honestly, I'm, I'm just going to be really transparent. I was just doing the, the pastor thing. It's like, well, people are still here, so I got to talk to them. You know, it's not, it wasn't like I, I wanted to be there. It was more out of obligation. I began to have a conversation. Some of you are like, man, you're really being honest. Yes, yes, I am. Um, but we began to have this conversation. I can't tell you what we, we even began to talk about. But as we were talking, it was like there, something happened on the inside of me um, that, I, that, that was just a, it was an encounter with the Lord. It was, he changed me in a moment. And as these two people and, and me were having this conversation, I was having this inner dialogue with the Lord. And it was like he stripped my, my natural, judgmental eyes, my cynical eyes, and he gave me his eyes for a moment. And in that moment, I remember looking at them in a, in a way that I'd never seen them before. And I just remember the Lord saying, see, Keith, see, that's my son. That's my daughter. That's my child. I made them that way. I made them different than you on purpose. And, and it was just like in a moment, the, the way that I viewed them completely changed. And the Lord did something in my heart that day. He did something in me that was, was honestly supernatural. I even remember in that moment, I actually had to hold back the tears because of what God was doing on the inside of me. It was just an amazing moment. And I remember thinking in that moment, you know what? I'm actually more thankful that they're different than me than that they're the same as me. I actually became more grateful and more thankful in that moment. Like, God, thank you so much that there's not a lot of keys running around the world. There's not, everyone's not like me, that the people think different, they talk different, they look different. And I begin to appreciate and fall in love with the diversity that was happening in that room with just me and those two other people. And my life forever changed in that moment. And I just want to ask you, as you're listening right now, as you're watching, have you had that moment? Has there been a moment where you've actually come to this place where you, you, you just tell the Lord, I actually appreciate that people are not like me. I actually appreciate the diversity that you created in the world. Isn't this just like God? I mean, can you believe, I, I, I can't believe that he did this. He said, I'm going to make many parts. I'm going to make them one body. I'm going to give different gifts to different people. I'm going to give them different perspectives. I'm going to make every single person who's ever born look different. This is, this is God. I'm going to make them all look different. And then he's gonna, he has the audacity. God has the audacity to do this. Now, now, now that all of you are different, I want you to come together. Now that all of you see things completely different, I want you to come together. I'm going to make men this way. I'm going to make women this way. And I'm going to have you marry each other. <laughs> like, do you ever look up sometimes married people and be like, Lord, what were you, like, what were you thinking? You know, how is this supposed to work out? That's because there's beauty in diversity. There's actually beauty in the fact that someone has a different political view than you do. 
In fact, we should just even take a moment, and we don't have to do it out loud because that, that may be weird, but just thank God right now for that. Thank him that there's different people in this world, that the body of Christ is diverse. I love what Scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says, if the whole body were an eye, how would you hear or if your whole body were an ear. Um, well, that, that doesn't make any sense right there. It says, how, <laughs> if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? I don't know why that, <laughs> that says that there, but I guess it's written wrong. You get the point. How would you hear if, you, if, 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 if everyone was a mouth? How would you hear? And he goes on to say in verse 18, but our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. And then he goes on to say this in verse 19, how strange a body would be if it had only one part. The truth is, not everyone else is weird. It would actually be weird if everyone was like you. That's the revelation that I'm getting. It's like, thank God, how strange it would be if the body only had one part. And then he goes on in verse 20, he says, yes, there are many parts, only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. I want to encourage you today, if you are a part of uh, a church, a body, if you're having conversations with this body, if you're having conversations with family and friends, and there are people who are disagreeing with you, can I just say you've surrounded yourself with some good people. If there's people who, who, who have a different perspective than you that are believers, that's good. I'm telling you this morning, that's, that's actually a good thing. We need people in our life that are completely different. I'm even looking at people in this room as we're filming, and there's not one person, in, there's literally not one person in this room that is like me. Not one person. And, I've, and I'm not trying to make this message about me, but I've seen in my life, I think the Lord has done this on purpose, I've seen throughout my life, the Lord has always put people who are different around me. I mean, this is my, my college roommate. His name was Rowdy Walker. He was named after a bull, all right? Rowdy don't wear skinny jeans, okay? <laughs> Rowdy wears Wranglers. He still wears Wranglers. You know what my other best friend in college was my freshman year? His name was Lade Rogers. He must be a country singer. Come on, somebody. Like, he, he, had, he owns at least 54 horses. His name is Lade Rogers. And it's like everywhere I go, and all the people that, that, seem to, that I seem to get around and come, they're all different than me. And you know what? I've fallen in love with that. I actually, one of my favorite things to do is actually to meet new people. It's one of my favorite things I enjoy doing. And I actually believe that is the heart of God. I believe that is the heart of God. And I would even warn you today, if, only, if, the, if the people around your, around your life and in your circle are just like you, who look just like you, who talk just like you, and believe just like you, you probably need to find some new friends. You probably need to find a more diverse group of people to come into your life because you are missing out on, what God, on, on the fullness of God that he has for you. This is why he put many parts in, into the body. Um, I wrote this down, I'll say this, and then we, we, we might move on here. Unity. Unity isn't about not having any differences. Unity is about coming together despite our differences. Many of us think that in order for us to unify, we all got to think the same, look the same, talk. No, no. It's actually to be able to accept our differences and still be able to move forward. Remember, I'm talking to the body right now. I'm talking to believers. I'm talking to about a people who have one, co one thing in common. It's the most important thing that could, that could ever be in common, and his name is Jesus. We believe in him. We center our faith around him. We stand around him. We unify around him, and we let all the other things fall to the wayside. This is what Paul was talking about. This is what he's talking about in Romans. This is why he said, don't argue about what you're going to eat. Don't argue about this person who thinks this day is, is more important than the other. In other words, don't argue about things that don't really matter. Don't argue about things that aren't black and white. And let me just give you a real life right now example. We, all, we, we should all agree in the body of Christ that racism is evil. 
Racism is sin. Racism is wrong. I'm not saying that we should have disagreement about that and accept views of that, that disagree with that. No, no, no. That's pretty black and white in Scripture. <laughs> we were created in the image of God, every single one of us. However, there's quite a bit of um, disagreement and dispute around the, the subject of white privilege. I don't even like saying it. You don't even like hearing it. But you know what? You can pr- kind of get facts from wherever you want, and you can prove why it's real and why it's not. And here's what I'm saying. If you were in the body of Christ, we should not be arguing about that. That is not a subject to argue about. And I'm not saying it's not a subject to talk about. I'm saying it's not a subject to argue about. If, if, if these topics and these subjects that are surrounding our culture, if they are leading to division, they are wrong. If they are leading to dividing the body of Christ, and they are not black and white in Scripture, then you might be, I'm just saying, and I'm not saying that it is, you might be wasting your time. The enemy might be distracting us from the conversation that really matters. The enemy might be distracting us from the thing that really matters. And the thing that really matters is if there's racism in your heart, it needs to get out. That's what really matters. That's the conversation here. The, the, the conversation should be around if there's any in our family, let's talk about it. The conversation should be let's raise our kids so that they can see color and make no judgment based on the color. That they can see people of color in their culture and accept it, actually glean from it. You know what? The white community could use the black community's culture when it comes to music and dancing. Because we, we know, all white people, we ain't got no moves. If it weren't for black people, we wouldn't have any moves. <laughs> and I'm making light of the conversation, but I, I really mean that. Are we welcoming in even not just the different colors, but different cultures? Are we unifying? Are we saying, you know what, that is completely different. But I'm going to open up to that. I might actually like that. You know what, it might actually be good to learn a different dance than the two-step. Come on, somebody. All right. <clears throat> Romans chapter 15, Paul says, May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, he said, help you live in complete harmony with each other, as is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. Then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 7, I love this. He says, therefore, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you. Wow. Accept each other just as Christ has accepted you. And so I want to give us five ways today. I want to give us five ways that we can, in the midst of our disagreements, Still stay together, come together. How do we do this? How do we stay unified? How do we stay or get in to harmony? How do we deal? Because let's, let's, let's all be honest. It's not easy to invite disagreement. It's not easy to accept someone who is not like us or, or, or has different political views. That's not easy. It's not easy to surround ourselves with people like that. So how do we do it? And I got this from uh, Romans chapter 14 and 15 is where these points came from. But the first point, how do we stay together? Number one, don't argue. Don't argue. That means this. If you're in a conversation with another believer and they aren't listening, stop talking. We all know what it's like to really get into a conversation and halfway through you know, uh, they're not listening. They're not listening. You might want to tell them to go back and listen to last week's message. But you can do, we just get in those conversations. You know they're not going to budge. You know they, they're just, nope, this is what I'm going to believe, and it don't matter if Jesus was in front of me telling me to change my mind. I wouldn't. If that's the case, well, you know what? Stop talking. Move on to something else. Don't fall out of love with them. No, nope, stay in love with them. Stay unified. Of course, I'm still talking about these, these, these subjects that aren't necessarily black and white in Scripture. But don't argue, because it only leads to division. That is not what God has called us to do as the body of Christ. We're supposed to stay together. Number two, don't look down on other believers. Don't look down on other believers. Don't look down on them for the way that they live or for their political view or for the different perspective. Don't look down on them. If they have a different point of view, 
love them anyways. Number three, realize, this one, this one will really help you, how you can stay together. Realize that everyone is on a journey and everyone is at a different point in that journey. I learned this a long time ago and I, 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 this, this, this really, really helped me. Never hold someone accountable for the truth that you know. Never hold someone accountable for the truth that you know. You may actually be at a different place. You may have walked through a season in a different area that they haven't walked through yet. So don't hold them accountable for that knowledge that you have. Don't hold them accountable for that truth, uh, accountable for that truth that you know that they may not even know yet. You, a lot of times we, as even as pastors and being in ministry, we all kind of think this way. It's like how how do they not know that? How could they possibly be living that way? How could they possibly have that view? Well, everyone's on a journey, and everyone's on a different point at a different point in that journey. And if we can realize that, I think it can help us stay unified. Number four, let others live by their own convictions. Let others live by their own convictions. If they don't like steak, you can pray for them. But let them live by their own convictions. And I would even say this, for us, we should live by our own. I love what Romans chapter 14 says. It said, it, it, it was Paul, he was even assuming of believers. He said, those who eat certain things and don't eat certain things, he says, they do it to honor God. Those who observe certain days and think they're special, they do it to honor God. He, he just, he realized, he, he assumed this about believers. The things that they are doing are to honor God. What if we assumed, come on, that's good right there. What if we assumed that each other, and the, thing, the decisions we were making, the things that we were doing, we assumed that, that, that everyone around us was doing it to honor God. And they were doing it in pursuit of him. Let us, let others li- uh, live their life by their own convictions. And then number five, I think this is key. This is kind of one of those things where it gives you something to do and not just something not to do. Number five, spend more time encouraging than debating. Spend more time encouraging people than debating. Multiple times in scriptures, you know what it says? There's never anywhere where it says, hey, argue with your neighbor. (laughs) Hey, argue with, actually, there's multiple scriptures that says, you know what? Encourage. Build each other up. Encourage one another into love, into the, into good works. First Thessalonians 5, 11 says, so encourage each other and build each other up. Encourage each other and build each other up. I don't know about you, but I can't live this life if it weren't for the people in my life. I can't pursue God the way that I know I need to if it weren't for surrounding my people, uh, being surrounded by people who help me and encourage me when I'm down. And so I want to encourage you to be that encourager. Be that person that is encouraging and that is building up people around you. Would you pray with me this morning? Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you're good, and we thank you that you created all of us different. Yeah, it's even in your nature to give us different parts of your nature. I thank you for that, God. I thank you for who you've made me to be. I thank you for who you've made the people who are listening, that you've made them to be the way that they are. but in us coming together that we can actually get a truer picture of who you are and the completeness that is in you. And I pray right now, I just I'd encourage you as the, as the body of Christ, would you join me in this prayer? Lord, we just ask you to bring us together. We come against every tactic, every strategy of the enemy, and we bind it in Jesus' name. What the enemy is, is meaning for harm, I thank you, Lord, that you turn it for good. Where where differences might divide us, I thank you right now we change our perspective, that the world changes its perspective, that the body of Christ, there's even a move of changing our perspective, and diversity actually moves us towards each other and towards you instead of away from each other and away from you. That you actually turn what the enemy meant for him. You, You literally flip it, God, and you turn it for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Lord, we pray even right now that you would bring people into our life that are different than we are. We invite 
different opinions. We invite different views. We invite different perspectives from other believers. Because we realize there's wholeness and completeness in that very thing. Yeah, God, we just thank you for it. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you that the Spirit of God lives in us. And I pray right now that that Spirit begins to come out of us. It begins to come out of us. And it looks like love, joy, peace, patience with our brothers, kindness towards our sisters, gentleness in conversation, self-control when people might disagree with us. I thank you, Lord. We have the strength and we have the ability to be who you've called us to be and to be like Jesus. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.